Hello, from Vegas and the Doritos Pyramid. <laughs> We're flying JSX. Well, the artist formerly known as Jet Suite X. JSX is a semi-private airline that are trying to blend the luxury of private flying with the accessibility of commercial air travel. They cater to both business and sort of premium leisure travelers and serve a bunch of key destinations in the US and Cabo in Mexico. They operate a fleet of Embraer jets. They all have 30 seats. This is pretty important to the sort of legal framework, legal loophole that they're operating under. We'll get into that towards the end of the video. Oh yeah, also some of these jets have Starlink, the one that I was on luckily did so we'll be checking that out as well now I guess the kind of first pro or goofy thing of uh, JSX is they operate out of weird FBO terminals so it's not out of the big main airport it also means that you don't go through traditional TSA screening and they say you can get there as late as 20 minutes before your flight and still board and have checked bags and everything so so yeah the big selling point is obviously saving you time so I staying at the Excalibur, right next to the Pyramid place. Yeah, it's just under one mile from the JSX uh, terminal. Me being cheap old me, I'm walking there. Well, the footpath might just end in a second. I'm probably definitely in the one with a 1%. Not 1% of wealthy people that catch net jets, but 1% of people who are crazy enough to walk to these terminals. <laughs> Bro, they need to spend some money on this road. It's like cobblestones. But instead of cobblestones, it's just the, the pavement's broken up. Okay, that's a literal Ro Rolls Royce. <laughs> okay. Check in here. Okay. What do you need to see? ID, ID yes. LAX or Burger? LAX. The check-in process for JSX was much like any other airline you've ever flown. They do do this sort of like swabbing test. They do it to you and all your bags. I believe this is just testing for explosives. It's a step beyond what they actually have to do as per the regulations, but super quick, non-invasive, way better than taking your shoes off, taking your laptop out of your bag, going through TSA. This is pretty much the only security you actually have to go through and it's like 10 seconds. After that, you end up in this little departure lounge. It's super basic and honestly, a little bit underwhelming. I'm not sure if I'm just getting really used to business class lounges or if yeah, this is just kind of not actually that luxurious. There's free coffee and that's about it. There's no snacks or like a drinks fridge with soft drinks, nothing like that. <laughs> Just coffee. I just got a double shot espresso, so I'm gonna be alive. There's a lot of dogs. <laughs> Seems like every fourth person is flying with their dog and it's one of those designer dogs. It's very LA. Alright. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we just walk out, I guess. Ah, oh, yeah. Pretty simple. Kind of sick, honestly. There's kind of too much going on. Too many sounds, too many noises. a bit tight. Oh. Definitely kind of cool. She's taking drink orders. What am I going to have to drink? Let's see. They had a pretty standard assortment of juices, soft drinks, tea and coffee, but also had a bunch of alcoholic options. They had wine, beer, a bunch of just like spirits, and, and then some cocktails even. So that was definitely like a little bit fancy, a little bit impressive. Hi. Can I get a diet coke? Yeah. Thanks. What can I say? These seats are fine. It's a one hour flight, but to be fair, they're probably not the most padded things in the world. I was kind of expecting something a little bit more comfortable, but it's fine. Um, it's a good amount of leg room. My knees have probably, you know, a few inches, probably, it's probably five or six inches um, before my knees touch the seat in front. It's a bit annoying having the bag because there's no overhead bins, right? They do give you two, you do get two checked bags to sort of counteract that, so, yeah, you can just basically only bring a backpack on board. It's not exactly full to the brim. I think there might be, I think only 16 or 17 seats are taken out of the 30. And I've got six seats around me, all empty. Empty, 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 empty. 
I'm literally in the I'm in the last row, so I probably could move if I wanted to, but yeah. We'll see how loud it gets back here. The engine do be right there. <laughs> We're still on the ground and that's impressive. I mean, let's see how it is when we get in the air, but that is one of the more impressive things so far. Okay, got the Diet Coke. I'm really not sure if you can hear me, but it is very loud back here. That Coke was very loud as well. It is very loud back here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We got 80, 83, 84 decibels. That is very, very loud. It's a little bit hard to understand how loud this is without any context. I've done this test on a few other planes. 737 Maxes and Dreamliners are around 71, 72 decibels. And I found A380s at the front and A350s are some of the quietest planes that I've been on and they are like high 60s. Here's just a sort of chart on level of noise to give you an idea of just how loud it is. It's, it's sort of like having a hairdryer or a vacuum cleaner right next to your head. I'm just glad that I wasn't on this plane for more than like an hour. And look, if I wasn't filming a video, I'd probably have noise cancelling headphones on. Wow. And sure, okay. Yeah, they do. Thanks. So they are very generous with the snacks. The sweet potato tortilla chips. Corn and sweet potato. Interesting. Not bad. Granola baked bar. Blueberry. I might actually just not eat that one now. Then we got like a snack mix. Okay, yeah. It's the So Gouda Keto. Keto Trio. It's very LA. I did find it pretty interesting. Only about half the cabin got drinks. Not sure if that's like, cause they're like LA, you know. Now here's a fun one for you. This nutritional label, right? The serving size is 30 grams, but then, but then in the actual breakdown, we've got 21 grams of fat, five grams of total carbs and 10 grams of protein. Now, I don't know, can you do some basic maths? Like that is 36 grams of nutrients in a 30 gram serving size. The math is not mathin'. Okay, you know what's cool actually? Because we got internet, they got Starlink obviously. I can see on the map where we are. So we are like getting quite close to LA. Seatbelt sign has been on the whole time. I really would have liked to use the toilet, but let's just do a quick speed test now that we're in the air as well. It's definitely, the, definitely the most usable internet I've ever had on the on a plane. Usual satellite internet is like half the speed. Even the SkyMaster Qantas internet in Australia, that one's actually pretty quick. It's just the latency is ridiculous. So, should we go into internet? And long story short, this internet is like it's like using 4G or 5G on your phone. It's pretty incredible, really. Everything just loads really quickly. You can watch YouTube. You could watch Netflix. You could watch everything. Big ups to the Starlink internet. It does a very good job. That's how much recline we have. It's not bad. There's a bit too much marketing spin on the seats. They're not that good. I mean, we've got like one power outlet down here. Also, there's quite a lot of space behind these seats. You might be thinking, just like I am, they could just scoot all the seats forward a little bit and add another row, right? They can't. We'll get to that in a minute, once we land. I 
found this a little odd, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Once we pulled up at the parking spot in front of the private jet terminal, we were kept on board until all the bags were offloaded, and they just kind of pile them up next to the plane, and you just go and grab your bags and walk over to the terminal. It's a very efficient system, I guess. I did find it a little odd that they kept us on the plane until all the bags were off. I guess maybe they didn't want us to go and bug the baggage handlers or something. But yeah, this was definitely like the most priority baggage handling I've ever experienced. Got my bags, there's the plane. definitely unique. That's sick. Guys, so it's a couple hours later now. I'm in the land of the rental car. JSX, should you fly them? Probably, if it suits your route and they're cheap enough. So I paid 219 USD for that. Which is a lot. <laughs> for Las Vegas to LA. I could have done it on Southwest or American Airlines or any of the other airlines, like normal airlines for like a hundred bucks probably. If you value your time very highly, then look, it was pretty sick to be able to show up to the airport 30 minutes before the flight and it was like, no worries. No security is cool. It's not like business class. Let me put it that way. It's not like business class. Once you do business class the first time, you want every flight to be business class. Yes, you'll do economy, but in this case, I'm like, mm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not addicted. Let's put it that way. Now let's talk about how they work, what's going on, why they're, look, they're kind of loopholing the system. So let me explain why they're loopholing the system uh, and why there wasn't really any security. So all the airlines in America operate under what's called part 121 regulations. There's a whole bunch of things that they have to, in terms of security, pilot training, uh, maintenance, all that sort of stuff. It's a big set of regulations that they have to follow. These are to ensure that general air travel is safe. One of them is that you need a flight attendant for every 50 passengers. Airline pilots need to be under 65 years old. Things like that that just ensure that air travel is safe, at least in America. That's what the regulations are for. There's this other set of regulations called Part 135. This was sort of intended for small charter airlines, private jets, that sort of thing where it's commercial, so people are paying for the trip. It's not just like general aviation, but you're not transporting hundreds of people. You're not landing into big airports. And so there's sort of two parts to this regulation. You can operate regularly scheduled charter flights, but you need to have nine passengers or less on the plane. So these are like the Cessnas that are flying out to regional destinations. And then there's another part of the regulations, which are you can run charter flights with 30 passengers or less. So these are like one-off flights and you can run them in things that are like an Embraer, like what we were on today, for 30 people or less, and you don't have to follow the same regulations and rules that are set out in part 121. So your pilots can be over 65, and also there's things about TSA. There's not the same level of security uh, that's required because these are smaller planes, they're less of a threat, I guess. So how does JSX run scheduled flights under this because they don't fit, they've got more than nine people and they're running regularly scheduled flights, right? So they don't fall under the nine people or less and they're not like a one-off charter, right? Here's the loophole. What they do is when you buy the tickets, you're buying the tickets through JSX Company One, who isn't an airline and they're not running flights. And then when you actually get on the plane, that's run by JSX Company Two. This is like basically a charter company that gets employed by Company One to run the flights. Company One collects all the money and organizes the tickets. Company two actually operates the flights on behalf of that company one. So they're sort of a charter airline for this other airline that's running regularly scheduled flights. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Somehow that legally is okay with the FAA currently. They're definitely starting to raise eyebrows because they're getting quite, they're expanding. They're becoming quite a, a big airline because there's a lot of, there's a lot of airlines that do this, but none of them have sort of scaled to the level that JSX has scaled to. Who knows how long this will last? I don't really know, but that is the loophole. I respect it. I respect the game. That is why there's 30 seats on the plane. You could clearly see in the shots, there's a solid half a meter behind me. Where the, like if you just shift all the seats a little bit, you could fit another three seats. They have to do 30 to fit within the charter regulations. Anyway, hope you guys like that video. Check out flightformula.com if you uh, pretty much if you collect Qantas points at this point. But you know, there's a blog there. There's some other there's some interesting tools for getting cheap points and stuff like that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one. Probably without a sandwich. Probably not in LA. Probably not on a JSX flight. Maybe ever again. Who knows? Anyway, bye. Are you ready? Just wait for it. Three, two, one. Oh my god. Oh, it's an A380.
It's my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>